Saturday morning and welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray, brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray. Boy, we have fun on this show every Saturday morning, and particularly on first Saturday because uh, I have a chance to kind of just chat with uh, two of my favorite people, and I I get to chat with them once a month. And uh, of course, we're we're home solo as usual. With uh, we we not only chat, we, we chat, we chit chat. Yeah, well, I don't know uh, if <laughs> Gene Smith even chit chats, but uh, it's a it's a Daryl and Daryl old time radio show. It is, it is. I wish y'all were here, but Shelby McCall is here taking care of us on this uh, December the fifth, and uh, uh, I'm, we're gonna have, like I say, a lot of fun, a lot of information, fastest ninety minutes in outdoor radio program. We're gonna talk about uh, deer blinds. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Arctic ice. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, camo. We're going to talk a lot about uh, a young man who is, uh, I would say, is a battler. If there ever was a battler. And then at the end of the show, it is winter trout time. And so I know a lot of you folks out there can't wait. In fact, Dave, if I remember Dave Gowart and Gene Smith is my co-host, Dave, I, I, there are people uh, – Lined up exactly, waiting for the trucks. You've seen it, haven't oh, you, yeah. Gene? Yeah, yeah. Dave, yeah, and Bartlett. Yeah, they lined up around the bank almost. Yeah, and right. and Dave, you've seen that too, haven't you? I mean, uh, I have, and uh, it's funny, but kind of before you know, we started, you know, the winter trap stocking, you know, in West Tennessee. Yeah, back when they used to, you know, the still stock trout in the streams and stuff. Uh, <laughs> over. Uh, in East Tennessee and Middle Tennessee. Hold it, Dave. Hold it, Dave. That's My other phone's ringing. That's Gene's other phone ringing. It's 6 o'clock on Saturday morning. That is that is not the rooster. Did you, did you, did you, That's my wake-up call. Hey, did y'all hear that? Folks out there, you think this show isn't prepared? I mean, we got a... We, we've got a, we got a... They want to sell me some car insurance. Well, they're going to sell it with a, with a uh, rooster... Crow, That's you know? right, <laughs> Dave. You're going to have to turn up the volume on you. I don't know. I know you're sitting down on your porch, but you're kind of low because you have to speak up and uh, uh, get a little louder for my listeners out there. Because uh, how, how am I now? Now you sound much yeah, better. Sounds good I, now, think, yeah. I think the rooster woke you up. So uh, <laughs> well, I can't believe that. I can't. How many phones you got, Gene Smith? Three. Three. Okay, one for each ear. I mean, that, no, yeah, that's not it's right. True, it's true. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> that is not true. He, he lets his dog answer one of them. Yeah, well, I don't know, but that was great. Uh, right here on radio, a rooster crowing to wake everybody up. Uh, I know that truck. That's that, right. That truck driver. But back, but, but, but back to the trout. You know, one yeah. of our guys wrote a song one time. It was called, The Trout Trucks Are Coming. There'll be a fish Friday night. Oh, all right. <laughs> And hey, that sounds familiar. And they will be. So that's in the last segment of today's show. But uh, stick around for that. And, uh, man, I, I, I just love putting these things together. It doesn't really come easy sometimes. Everybody thinks that, y'all, this is real easy. You're just talking to these folks. But I can guarantee you. The, that's a Beatles song. Yeah. The, well, yeah. A hard day's night sometimes for me, no, too. Uh, don't, it don't come easy. It don't come easy. Uh, I want to hold your that's hand. That's right. Yeah, you know, some of those like that. But, uh Dave Gabbert, Gene Smith. Uh, Gene, I know that uh, 
you're you're just bubbling over with uh, puns for us today. You got a you got a pun to start the morning with? Well, I had some good news and some bad news. Uh oh. Okay. I, I won this uh, contest. And I get free dancing lessons. Free. But right. it's on it's on the second floor, and I'm afraid of stairs. Okay. <laughs> <You're afraid> of <laughs> stairs. <laughs> Where else, folks, can you get something like that <laughs> on, on, on the a radio? Bo- show? Uh, yeah, Bo- 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 is, Bo- it, ain't right. It's Shelby yeah. just said that and everything, <laughs> but uh, yeah. a lot of fun on today's show. This is. Uh, Does it seem like it should be December? It is December. I mean, I know, but then you know, the, the first Saturday here, we got duck season just open up, and yes, you know, years past, I'd be probably talking to you from the duck. Or uh, or I would be in the deer woods whispering yeah, to right. you, but uh, both of us are here today, and uh, normally, yeah, they would be in the duck blind, or me and Gene might even be in the duck blind with him if we could find it, you know. So uh, it depends on the the weather's been crazy. It's first first Saturday, which means uh, we got four Saturdays in December, and I'm going to tell you though, uh, we got gas piled up and everything, and. Uh, it's really looking good for some really positive guests. They would get down and do our Christmas show, things along that line. But we're gonna have a we're gonna have a lot of fun. And he did mention this is opening day of the duck season in Tennessee. You folks in Mississippi, yep. you started the second segment yesterday, and of course, the, they go through on 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 the sixth, but ours is today, yep. December the fifth. And of course, the weather's not. Uh, helping out any oh, with the warm the weather. weather. Don't worry about the weather. The weather, the duck hunters don't care, right, Dave? I mean, yeah, but know. the right. ducks you don't know. come down. The ducks don't come down. That's okay. They just sit in the blind and eat and talk and swap lies. Who does there that? You go. The ducks? No, the duck hunters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant the ducks just sit on there and talk now, lies. That's no. a bad thing about a slow duck season. Duck hunter put on ten, fifteen pounds. Well, yeah. Right, <laughs> right now, the reports I'm getting, Arkansas, of course. Uh, uh, opened up and went November the 21st through the 30th, and they opened back up on the 11th uh, through the 23rd. But uh, Tennessee opens today, folks, uh, and it goes right on through January the 31st. It's hard to believe. Uh, and then they'll close that out with that young sportsman's hunt uh, uh, first and second weekend in uh, in February, that February the 6th and February the 13th. But uh, ducks are going on. Deer's going on. They're killing record numbers, folks. Through December the first, I had heard that we're about thirty thousand ahead of last year. And Isn't that amazing? It, it's really amazing. And my yeah. good friend Dave Payne at Dave's Deer Processing, you need to check with Dave <laughs> this morning before you head over there because I know yesterday he was back in and he was limited to twenty five and maybe today. So uh just check. Dave's Deer Processing right there in uh, Mason, Tennessee, right out of Arlington. But he has been slammed. Other deer processor, I heard of another one in uh, Whiteville, that he's he's overwhelmed too. And Dave, why'd you say that? What was your uh, reason for well, that? I said, I said it was kind of like, uh, you know, why the turkey kill was up too this year. You know, everybody because of this pandemic, a lot of people out of work. Uh, yes. So they go hunting. And they have yeah, the, the there you and, go. and our eleven CWD counties, you, you can you can kill yeah. so many deer. Uh, so uh, it just depends on what you want. And I hope some of you folks out there uh, don't don't forget the Hunters for the Hungry program with the Tennessee uh, Wildlife Federation. I'm writing about that uh, in Sunday's Commercial Appeal. I hope it gets in there. But uh, you can donate the deer. For, and never more, never more has people needed venison than this year. Don't you guys right. agree on that? I mean, uh, the food pantries and things along that line. So, uh you deer hunters out there, uh, take part in that program this year because they need you. They really need you. Last year, uh, they did over 130 or 40,000 pounds of deer uh, in that program, and they're looking at 150,000 yeah. this year and 3,000 wow. deer. Three, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, I, and I wish, you know, for, you know, your listening audience out there, especially the landowners, and farmers that might be having a problem in the spring, yeah, that gets issued depredation permits. Yes, I would, you know, I wish they would open up and let more people, you know, hunt on their property to kill more antlers deer. Because now I used to know landowners or farmers that would get depredation permits, 
you know, and usually, you know, kill 25, 30 deer at a time, yeah. you know, in the spring. And they just have to let them lay. They drag them off. It's terrible. And, uh, yeah, yeah. We and, need to, uh, so, we, 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 those food pantries really need them this year as far as uh, uh, the venison that's out there. So that's a program we were talking about also. But uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to uh, Michael Perry and his dad, Jim, later in the show too today, folks. Stick around for that in the next the last segment. If you remember, Michael is the young man that uh, fell out of a deer stand. The deer stand broke, the climbing stand or whatever it might have been. Broke, he fell and was impaled by a stump. And uh, and he has hmm. uh, got quite a story. He's really a battler. So we're going to talk to him later on the show. And I'm going to give you a note also. Next week, Charlie Holder. Charlie Holder, Sure Shot Game Calls, is going to be on the show. And I'm going to give you an early hint right there. We're going to be giving away a real prize on next week's show during Charlie's segment. So you need to stick around that for all you duck hunters, whatever it might be. But uh, great to have Dave Gabbard. He's on his porch in Lexington, Tennessee. I really am on my deck. He's you're on your on deck. deck. Yeah, yeah, your deck. You're out on your deck. You know. Gene Smith is looking for his other phone, the one that's got the rooster on it right now. <laughs> in fact, uh, fact, I've been watching a few deer right there in my clover patches. Oh, and, uh, well, I hope morning. to watch some come Monday. Uh, I will be. I had planned the deer hunt today, but uh, a good friend of mine, Rodney Owen, he's, you know, you folks know that I know Rodney, his mom, Miss Mary Owen, passed away, and uh, yeah. I'm heading to uh, Selmer, Tennessee today. For that funeral, so uh, our prayers go out to the Owen family. All right, let's take our first break. Come back. We're going to talk about a ground blind that's probably the most unusual ground blind I've ever heard of. And you're going to really be interested in this. So stick around. We'll be right back on Outdoors with Larry. Ray. 